Okay, we have Judith Hankey. She is a professional in brain integration and brain training. And tonight she has got a wonderful message for us of how to avoid the summer slumps, which is gonna be even more challenging for us because of our current situation. Um, and how to uh, not lose ground, how, how, how to help your kids not lose ground during the summertime. And with that, Judith, would you like to take it away? Yes, I'm glad to be here and uh, hope that some of these ideas are gonna be helpful to you. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Can you hear me okay? I guess. So as I've been thinking about you, I've reflected on my summers as a child and as a mom, and also the things I've learned in working with students doing brain integration and brain training. One of the things that I enjoy about doing brain training is that when I'm working with a student, it feels like they're playing games, but while we're working one-on-one, -on -one, they are increasing their skills for learning and they're increasing their ability to have success. I'm hoping that the suggestions that I'm giving you will also do the same thing because as I was listing all these activities and if you've looked at the handout, you'll see that there's a lot of other resources there. Um, I'm thinking about just all of the tools that they need to learn quickly and efficiently. And I wanted to find things that would be great ideas for you to do that feel like fun rather than filling out summer workbooks or doing summer school. So my last child, David, was born 13 years after his brothers and sisters. During those 13 years, many changes took place in education. One of the changes was uh, about the benefit of reading aloud. Reading aloud awakens imagination and improves language skills. We stopped reading aloud to David's siblings once, the, once they could read, but with David, we read aloud to him into the teen years. One of my resources and the one that was the most valuable to me was called the Read Aloud Handbook. And it is a wonderful resource for reading material. And just a tip, I've seen a lot of those at the thrift stores like at ARC and wherever. So you can sometimes find them there and save some money. The handbook lists many books from picture books to novels that are wonderful for reading aloud. I highly recommend this. We had so much fun sharing adventures. One of my favorite memories is reading Chocolate Char Charlie in the Chocolate Factory one summer when we were stuck in a tent in the California Redwoods because of rain for three days. It was a lifesaver. Another book that we really enjoyed was Summer of the Monkeys. And if you haven't read that, it is a wonderful, hilarious book. It's about a train that gets derailed in the middle of the woods and all the circus monkeys disappear. And the circus offers a prize of money for every monkey that's caught. And it's a hilarious story of a little boy trying to capture these monkeys who outsmart him over and over again. So this brings me to my first point and the main point is not only guarding against summer slump, but also create a strong bond with your child by reading and reading and reading. There are so many fun things with reading in that you have all these shared memories as a family also. David ended up being the child who read dictionaries. I was focused on him having a reading habit. So in his summers during high school, I paid him to read books. I paid him by the book. It's been fun putting together a wide variety of ideas to help you have a successful school year next year. There are many things that you can do that strengthen your child's skills. Uh, research gives little support to traditional summer school, but a great deal to summer reading, reading to your child and reading by the child. There's a study that was done with sixth graders that 
showed that reading four to six books during the summer actually uh, alleviated the summer loss. They also recommended having the child write a book report about the book that they've read to help them remember it and also to make sure that they've read the book. I know that all of you have a lot on your plates, especially since we've had this unexpected time of confinement. And if you're a single mom, you've got a lot on your plate. I encourage you to give yourself permission to ditch the guilt. Be realistic with what works in your schedule. Pick a few things that work for you. And then um, go over the list with your children and see what's most important to them. There may be things that sound fun to you, but what if your child's not interested? It would be helpful to come up with a realistic list of things to do that you know your family loves and maybe some new adventures. Once you have your list, prioritize it and then schedule them. If you don't have it on the calendar, it will be much easier to not actually do it. Play. According to studies, children learn through playing. Neuroscientists discovered that enrichment, such as toys, games, and playing, actually can alter the brain's chemistry and physiology. The brain area associated with higher cognitive processing, the cerebral cortex, can benefit from environmental enrichment and play more than other parts of the brain. It also increases a child's creativity. Unstructured play allows children to develop their own games and pretend play and add to creativity. Playing also helps children with social relationships, empathy, and self-regulation. It also promotes motor skills, strength, and endurance. Um, I'm sure all of us have wonderful memories of the summertime playing with siblings and neighbors. We had um, a bakery that we sold mud pies from and we used uh, flowers to purchase the mud pies. It's really important to take the pressure off of yourself. Have fun with your children this summer and each of our children are so unique. Pick some activities that each one of them will enjoy. The interesting thing to me is that countries such as Finland have a huge focus on playing and their students go to school for the least number of years and have the longest holidays. Yet Finland consistently has some of the top academic results in the world. Exercise your child's imagination. Pretend there's no electricity or batteries for electronic games. Using just the materials that you can find around the house, have them engineer their own game. They should create written rules that explain how the game is played and how to win. Next, they need to play the game with you. This requires them to reimagine new ways to solve problems. There are many other things that you can do like water fights, Nerf gun wars, a marshmallow fight, water balloon wars, things that are engaging and they're cheap too. I'm sure that many of you have heard about the importance of limiting screen time. It is so easy to let this become a main thing, but there is little benefit. A rule of thumb is that for every hour of screen time, that means iPads, TVs, anything like that, um, that for every hour of screen time, they need at least an hour of physical activity. The screen time is overstimulating. And I noticed with my children that, the, that their moods and attitudes were negatively impacted by extended screen time. Here's a suggestion. Don't leave them to their own devices. Give them direction about the physical activity suggest they jump on, jump up rope or ride a bike or hopscotch or jump on a trampoline, uh, even running around the block. In the house, they can do wheelbarrow races across the living room or the basement, create an obstacle course, 
or run up and down the stairs, the important thing to know is that physical activity resets the vestibular system, which affects mood. It should be an understood standard that screen time comes with limits. Keep in mind that nighttime exposure to LED illuminated devices suppresses melatonin and disrupts the natural sleep cycle. I see a lot of children that have problems with sleeping at night and it's tied into this. Um, as a side note, it also would be helpful for parents to take a break from social media and their screens during their time with the family. So this is just another emphasis of one hour of physical exercise for every hour of screen time. Now I have some ideas that a number of families have used to create order in their summers. And I'm just gonna share them with you. One family um, set up a reward system. They got a roll of tickets from the dollar store. Mom and dad talked about the goals that they had for their kids for the summer. Um, they could earn tickets for doing chores, for playing a game with their siblings, um, seeing something that had to be done and doing it, engaging in relationships with people, physical activity. They could use their tickets to buy screen time or go for a walk or other activities. Another friend was very creative in ending his son's whining. He filled a bag with quarters and showed the bag to his son. He told him how much money was in the bag and explained about how the whining was disrupting the family. So in order to help him be more aware of what, when he was whining, dad would take a quarter out of the bag every time he whined. At the end of the week, his son could have any quarters left in the bag. It was an effective visual lesson. It made him more conscious of what he was doing. The other thing that all of us here, at least once in the summer, is I'm bored. I don't know if that has um, not happened to you, but it was constant with me. Be prepared. Have a board, box, or jar. Fill it with slips of paper, and on each of these papers, you've written a fun activity or a chore. So one activity would be hop on the foot on one foot around the living room three times, dust all the furniture in the family room, water the plants, lots of other things. When they're bored, they can draw from the box. I also had cards that I had written chores on the cards and they had the description of how to do the chore. And I handed these out when I heard that phrase. During this shutdown time, uh, a family in our church has been serving seniors. They've been going to homes of people in our church and working in their yards. They've also contacted small churches in our community and done yard work for them. Servanthood is a wonderful value to be teaching our children. Another family, they plan theme days for the summer. Monday is music, make, or ministry. They study music, make something, or minister to someone. Tuesdays are take a trip, like a museum or a day trip, or tell a tale. Wednesdays are wet water day. Thursdays are thinking and thankful. They go to the library, do thank you notes, skill building. And Friday, Fridays are friends and fun. Take time together with people. I think this quote is fun. When trouble strikes, head to the library. You will either be able to solve the problem or simply have something to read as the world crashes down around you. This is one of my very favorite places. There are countless resources here. And if you don't have air conditioning, it's also a ref refreshing place to be in the summertime. One of the benefits of using the Read Aloud Handbook is you can go online and you can reserve the books that look interesting to you. The other thing that I really like about the handbook is that he gives you a brief, brief synopsis about what the book is about and also lists some other titles of books that are like that one. So that if your children like that book, you have some other titles to look up and to read also. 
there's another great website uh, that I've listed on the handout called the Read Aloud Revival website. It has many book lists, blogs, and podcasts that are so helpful. Participating in the library reading contest every summer is great reading incentive. The other thing that's very beneficial for kids that are struggling with fluency and reading is that there are read-alongs available, books that have cassettes of the book that are all packaged together. And this helps them in their reading fluency and also increases the language skills and the vocabulary. Math-based books give an added benefit of thinking mathematically at the same time as reading. One of the Read Aloud Revival episodes lists many titles that introduce math concepts through books. Read a book about a location and then go there. Audiobooks are great for road trips. The other thing that's helpful um, for grandparents if they want gift ideas, especially if they're long distance grandparents like I am, is that they can take a look at the Read Aloud Revival site and they can mail a book or books to uh, your children during the summer. There's another incredible resource at the library. If you click on in the website on create, there's a repair cafe with tools and materials and volunteers to help you repair items instead of throwing them away. And in the maker spaces, there are sewing machines, scanners, 3D printers, laser cutters. There's endless possibilities. You can also look at the calendars and see all the programs that are available through the month. As you probably know, a lot of the resources, in fact, most of the resources at the library are free. This is just an example about how books can inspire and broaden our horizons. You can read Hidden Figures, which is an inspiring true story about four female mathematicians who helped NASA launch astronauts into space. Then go to the, um, a planetarium and check it out and bring up topics covered in the book. Writing. Uh, writing is emotionally grounding. It brings together many neurodevelopmental functions, such as memory, motor control, organization, verbalization of ideas. It can also provide clues to areas that your child is struggling with. Would your child enjoy writing a book? You can make it simple or use an online program to get the book professionally bound. This makes a great gift for relatives. After an activity this summer, have your child write a summary of what they did. What happened? Who was there? Why was this significant? What was the most important thing that took place? Allow them to give detailed accounts of activities. Kids who like comics can write their own with original text and pictures. Kids can create a scrapbook of summer activities with printed pictures and pages they can flip through. My children did that uh, many times w during summer activities and it's wonderful to even be able to go back and look at that now and be reminded of what we did. You can leave sticky notes with fun little messages for your child to read. One summer, we used notes of affirmation as a way to encourage our teenage daughter who was extremely negative. It was helpful just highlighting the things we love about her. Who doesn't like that? There's a new book that's just released entitled Blessed to Be Me. It's a guided journal, which would be good for teens and adults. You can compile top memories through the use of writing prompts. Introduce business to your child. Everyone likes earning some extra spending money. Encourage your child to start a business. They can do yard work, babysitting, walking dogs in the neighborhood, mowing people's lawns, helping in gardens. Ask them to keep you informed of their income and profits on a weekly basis. It's a great way to learn about accounting, calculating expenses, and managing profits. When my granddaughter was in third and fourth grade, her, class, her classes were divided into groups. 
each of the groups had to create a product and market it to the children in their grade. That experience inspired her to start her own slime business when she was in middle school. When slime became popular, she started making it with her friend and they sold it to their classmates. Then they started a YouTube channel demonstrating how to make the slime. They then progressed by creating their own recipes, making videos, they got followers, and ultimately were selling slime on Etsy. It was impressive to see these two girls create their product, fill orders, mail them, and do all the details that needed to be done. She said in two years, they grossed $4,000 and learned a lot about managing money. My son and his friend, when they were in high school, started a window washing business. <clears throat> they could only take jobs in our neighborhood because they had to carry their ladder since they didn't have a vehicle to transport their ladder. They did a good job and had a lot of business. I don't know if you've noticed that on the Parents Challenge website, there is a link to online courses that are about finances. And they're for grades kindergarten through 12, and they're divided by age groups. And there's some really good information on those. It's all free resource. Games. There's many games listed on the handout that I gave to you, and there's probably more that you know about. Playing games like Scrabble and memory games can maintain children's skills while still allowing them to relax and have a break from the pressures of learning. Playing games can improve numerical fluency, logic, and probability skills. It's also a great way to spend time together without phones and TVs. One of the games that my son liked was called Following Directions. Uh, it can be varied in many different ways based on age. Give them a card on which you've written directions to a place. I started it when he was in elementary school. And at that time, I just said, go to the corner, turn right, go this way, turn left. Um, I usually did it to a destination that had ice cream or toys. I would walk with him and he had to follow the directions to find the destination. Sometimes I would park my car there. Or other times I would give him directions on how to get back home. Um, another level of that would be that you could give him a compass to use, or you could uh, give him a point as north, south, east, west, and have them go on directions that way. There's also a good time in the summer to explore using maps. Whether you go on vacation or you're here in town, use a map to plan a route. You can let the child map out a route to the next destination, or you can calculate miles between one place and another. Another game that kids really enjoy is cup stacking. And this has tremendous um, impact on cognitive skills, motor skills, patterning, sequencing, focus, and hand-eye coordination. It targets specific areas of the body and brain to increase intelligence, problem-solving skills, and critical thinking. The flashcard games like math, war, speed, or concentration help with computation and memory skills. On the handout, I've listed a variety of games. Treasure hunts are good, and there's also many lists online that you can use. Um, the other thing that I've noticed with jigsaw puzzles, I've worked when I do an assessment with kids that have been working on a lot of jigsaw puzzles uh, their visual memories are amazing. The puzzles really strengthen that skill. Build together. When your child is involved with a home improvement project, they're doing math as part of the process. Depending on the task, they'll be working with numbers, spatial thinking, measurements, angles, and problem solving. It's a wonderful way to accomplish a goal as a team. I read about a camp where children come and they can create anything they can imagine. There's all kinds of materials, including pieces of wood, 
There's power tools and tools, and they can create anything they can imagine. One group of seven-year-old boys created a roller coaster, and they used scraps of wood to create the track and build, built a coast coaster to ride on the track. Home Depot and Lowe's have classes for kids too. Listen to music. There are many free summer concerts in the parks. Listen to music together at home. Clap to the beat, get up and dance. There's many opportunities to strengthen math skills and uh, there are many kids that struggle in the area of math. For younger children, remember that classifying, sorting, and patterning are all part of learning math. They can sort rocks by size. They can make patterned Fruit Loop necklaces. When you're at the store, let your child make a cash purchase and count the change. Figure out which buy is better. Estimate how much all the groceries in the cart will cost. Find the difference between the estimate and the actual cost. At the gas station, round gas per gallon price to the nearest tenth. Estimate how much filling the tank will cost. Go bowling, but don't use the computer to score. Instead, have your child score manually using a score sheet. You can get a score sheet off online. Um, when you play miniature golf, have the child keep score. If they like soccer or hockey, figure out the percentage of goals blocked or passes completed. If they have a special collection, ask them to compare the differences and similarities of each item. In the kitchen, integrate children into the cooking process by measuring ingredients, reading recipes, watching the stove timer, or dividing up portions for dinner. This reinforces math and reading skills. Older children can participate in meal planning, shopping, and cooking. You can also incorporate budgeting. Explore the outdoors, plant a garden. Kids learn where flowers and food come from and how they grow with care and nurturing. Time with nature is great for children Families can pitch a tent in the backyard if they don't have time to go camping. Exploring the trees, critters, and soil on local trails and in parks enhances kids' appreciation of the earth. At the Fountain Creek Nat Nature Center, there have lots of programs and opportunities to learn more about life around the water. A walk to the park can be an opportunity to talk about the neighborhood. Go for a hike. We have so many wonderful places to explore in our area. Uh, on the resource hand, handout, I gave you a link to the All Trails app, which is really helpful to use uh, in go finding hikes because it lists whether they're easy, moderate, difficult, gives you some information and also shows you when you're on the hike where you are on the trail. Try a nature scavenger hunt. There's lots of ideas online on things to look for. Use sidewalk chalk to your advantage. Math problems and word writing are more fun when they can be done, big and colorful. And there is no limit to all the resources for expanding science understanding. Explore robotics. There are online bigger beginner programs describing how to get started. Make a Rude Rube Goldberg creation. There are countless things to do that are strengthening skills while having fun. Uh, there are also experiments that are listed online that are simple, but I've also listed a book that has many ideas on scientific experience, experiments that can be done. Get creative. There's no limit to this. Um, an outdoor crafts for kids station allows them to spend time outside on a sunny day and hinders you worrying about spilling paint on floors, walls, and everything in between. Combine bubble mix and food coloring to give them something to create a masterpiece. 
There are craft classes during the summer at Michael's, at Hobby Lobby, at um, also Joanne's. There are many craft classes and also resources at the library. And there are classes that they have with 3D printers and all those other tools that are in the maker spaces. Uh, it's just limitless the opportunities for ideas. In conclusion, the key word is relax, read, play, and have fun doing it. There are many studies supporting these activities as a wonderful benefit for your children. Mind Builders offers brain integration and brain training, which gives the students the ability to succeed by helping the brain operate as a whole instead of in parts. If your child is struggling in school or has been diagnosed with a learning issue, I can help you. It's not hopeless. If your child doesn't like school, there's a reason. I believe that every child starts school with a desire to succeed. When they are negative about school, it has to do with their experience. This is a picture of cognitive skills, also known as brain skills. Your brain uses these core skills to think, read, learn, remember, reason, and pay attention. Most learning struggles are caused by one or more weak brain skill. We can do a brain skills assessment of your child which pinpoints areas of weakness that are holding your child back. It will help you understand why your child may be struggling and give you ideas for the next step. We've seen many children change from reluctant learners to eager learners. Feel free to call me or send me an email. Uh, my number is on the bottom of the handout.